Hello, this is the 15th devlog for my space game project, uh, made in Godot or Godot. Um, so, in this version, my to do list included uh, integration with ink scripting. So, if you're not familiar with it, uh, it's a conversation scripting tool or a story scripting tool that Inkle, uh, the video game studio, made. I think they got an inf uh, infusion of funding from Epic or someone to develop it further. Um, but they've released it for all than sundry to use and it's really good. It's like a markup system for chaining conversations together with multi-choice questions and answers and setting variables in state and flowing through a, a conversation or a set of conversations across a story. Um, works really great. Uh, there's a godot-ink plugin. I'll put a link in the description of the video for a plugin for Godot that makes it uh, really easy to integrate. It's really good. Um, so I've used that in two places. Um, so the first place is here in the mission selection screen. So I'm thinking missions will show up as a like an email and you can have a conversation about them to ask specifics, haggle for more money, that kind of stuff. Um, so you can you get a list of stuff and then you can ask questions. Uh, and I've also got, can you give me a load of text to check the scroll bars? And you get the opening crawl from Star Wars. Um, so you go back and forth, establish the parameters of your mission, and then you, you accept it and you go, yeah, and then you begin the mission. And then the next half of it is in mission conversations. So this is a little box on the right hand side where you have a, a conversation that um, pertains to stuff that happens inside the mission. And this can be influenced by stuff that happens like with mission logic that can kick off a new conversation or add uh, conversational options in there um, as you go. Um, so that was all relatively easy to get up and running. The hardest bit was actually getting the background color to go into these boxes. Godot's theme system is a bit weird, I could charitably call it, um, but um, eventually I got something that works all right. Um, my first pass at adding the conversation system was to have a separate ink file that contains the, all of the ink scripting relevant to that mission. Uh, but that, and, and then I load that at runtime. But the um, the Godot Ink plugin didn't really have an API that seemed to support runtime loading of ink files. And so, um, whenever I encounter a problem like that, where it seems as though I'm trying to do something that the API doesn't support, that usually means that I'm trying to do something silly and I haven't thought of the best way of doing it. Um, so I asked around, and some helpful folk on Discord. I don't have your name to hand. Sorry. Uh, nope, the, it's scrolled too far back. Um, you know who you are. Um, so I got some help um, and I discovered that the canonical way or the sort of most, um, yeah, the canonical, that's the right word, um, way to do it was to have a single ink story and then each of your separate files you can include into that main story and then you jump about to the knots or stitches that are inside your story that are specific to what you want to go to. So right now, uh, this mission has a knot that is in an ink file and then each stitch under that knot, they've got a very specific terminology, um, is like for the mission briefing screen, it, that's one stitch um, and then the stuff in the mission is another stitch inside that knot. And so you get a, you get a, a hierarchy of um, different conversational story bits. Um, you can set variables inside a stitch or a knot, but the scope is always either global or inside a stitch. So you either can have extremely local variables or extremely alocal, like global variables available everywhere, which struck me as a bit weird, but that's how it works and you know, I, can, I can work with it, whatever. You can also set up callbacks between ink scripting and Godot scripting and vice versa. So you can call into a function or have a function map out of the namespace into your into your scripting and do lots of other cool stuff. So it's flexible enough to do basically whatever you want, uh, which is neat. And they've released it all for free and the documentation is great. And it's, it's very much a writer's tool. So you can sit down and just decorate your, your um, conversational script with markup and it handles a lot of the background chaining stuff together and making sure everything looks like it should. Um, one thing that was a bit, that took a bit more work than I wanted is to have the player's choice text colored differently to the rest of the story text. 
Um, I would have thought that would be very straightforward, but I had to sort of hack it a little bit to set a flag when you pick something to say the next thing that gets printed gets printed differently in its own box with its own with its own text color. Um, again, I might just be trying to do something weird. Um, so the other thing I wanted to do for this release is some rudimentary AI collision avoidance. So uh, we've got an enemy ship down here. I've just committed the turn, so it's it's playing out, and this guy's flying in with with ill intent. And previous to this version, this guy would um, simply fly as fast as he could towards these ships. And if he kills them before he gets there, good. If he doesn't, he collides with them. And in either case, he also collides with that, that asteroid that I put in a convenient spot just behind them. So right now, you notice that the, the AI ship's uh, retro rockets are firing to slow down. And that's because I've added a bit of um, sort of the desire to live to the AI. So if it... It, it projects forward and sees it's going to collide with something in the next three seconds, I think it is, then it will, it'll slow down. Um, doesn't always work 100%, and there are some failure modes where it can like slow down prematurely or, or whatever, but um, it's good enough for now um, to solve the biggest problems that were stopping me doing testing and stopping me doing different types of mission. Um, this is a really big problem to solve in a general sense. Um, in a previous RTS VR space game I made a couple of years back, um, I spent quite a lot of effort uh, on both formations and uh, 3D freeform navigation to have things go around obstacles and you know, do pathfinding in, in uh, empty 3D space. Um, and it's really hard. It's a, it's a hard problem. Um, so I just wanted to get something that would let me test more different variants of missions without all of the AI ships just barreling into obstacles left, right, and center. Um, so that works well enough for now. Uh, the next thing I want to do is add some screen space uh, movement particles. So right now, if I face off into the skybox like this, I, I don't have, I have no apparent movement. If I don't have some objects in my field of view, I can't tell if I'm moving. So what a lot of games do to get around this problem is um, have some sort of screen space uh, particles that move around as you move to show that you are you have some movement in in space. Um, that it's really expensive to like fill space with actual dust particles, so you, you get the the you know a proper genuine effect of having a moving through a dust field. But you can fake it with just screen space stuff, and it works well enough. Um, in 90% of cases. Um, so I want to do that um, to make the movement a bit a bit nicer because yeah, right now if you're um, if you're flying out where there's no obstacles, then you can very easily get um, you know lose understanding of how fast you're going. Um, the other thing I wanted to do was add a button to reset to the start of the turn. So right now, if you crash into something halfway through a turn, uh, you have to wait until the clock runs down uh, before you can have another go, and that's just a bit boring. I'd like to just tap a button and then jump back to the start of the turn or just reset it back and start playing again instantly or well, we'll see how it feels. Um, but yeah, those two things I want to wanna do next. The relatively low-hanging fruit, easy ones, because I spent quite a while on uh, version 14 and version 15, longer than I wanted to spend on any individual version. Um, also, there's been some real-life stuff that's causing me a bit of, bit of brain pain, but um, nothing too bad. Uh, okay, that's all. Bye-bye.